New AI tools are being released every day and it's hard to know which ones are useful and which ones are not. For me, I use these five AI apps every day for software development, content creation, and the last one for improving my mental health. So if you're a software engineer or a content creator and you're not using AI tools in your work, then you're wasting hours per week while your competitors are getting ahead. But if you watch the rest of this video, you won't have to worry about it because the five AI apps I'll go over I think are the best general purpose AI tools for most work out there. And it provides a really great starting point for making yourself more productive and staying ahead in the AI world. The first AI app I use every day is what I think the best general purpose AI tool out there. It helps me code faster, write more compelling YouTube scripts, draft more cohesive emails, as well as document anything that I'm working on. And it is none other than ChatGPT and sometimes Claude too. ChatGPT and Claude are general purpose image and text generation tools and ChatGPT now can do Excel files and PowerPoints with their new agent mode. And they ultimately help me make in minutes what it took me previously days to do. I think of ChatGPT as more of a jack of all trades compared to Claude where it's pretty good at image generation text generation and now it does different file formats, whereas I think Claude is really better for problem solving, especially within software development when I use Claude in the next app I'm going to talk to you about, but Claude's also really good at writing depending on the model you choose. And I think it's a really good practice for you to do after watching this video to compare the outputs of ChatGPT and Claude to see which ones you like better. And that I think is a really good barometer for helping you decide which AI tool is right for you in terms of general purpose chatting applications. Because now you never have to deal with staring into a blank page and getting writer's block or staring into a blank code base, which feels like staring into a black hole or Steve Buscemi's eyes. I think ChatGPT and Claude are really great at especially helping you get a first draft started of whatever you're trying to make. And then you go in and afterwards make the edits you need to make it more personal, add your human touch and tone. I think that's just a really great workflow for just making anything in the digital world nowadays. And while ChatGPT and Claude are also really great for coding, this next app actually is a lot better for coding and a lot more suited to it because I don't have to copy and paste code between web browsers or different files back and forth anymore. This app automatically understands my code base and infers and reasons from it. This AI tool automatically has my entire code base in its context without me having to copy and paste manually the files from it anymore, while also being able to autocomplete in a very intelligent way before and after the cursor. I think I just spoiled the name. Yeah, it's Cursor and Copilot. Cursor is being used by over half of all engineers at Fortune 500 companies, and it's really great at being able to autocomplete your code before and after the cursor, which Copilot isn't as great at doing, but GitHub Copilot's also been catching up really, really well lately. As a developer in 2025, I generally prefer Cursor over Copilot. And within Cursor, my main model driver, especially for coding, is Claude Sonnet 4. And whenever I run out of credits for it, I'll switch to a different model. And sometimes the problem cursor is solving is just too hard and it gets stuck. In which case, I'll often copy and paste the error messages into ChatGPT or Claude Desktop, and I often get a pretty good solution there, or just using Google Search, the classic Stack Overflow way. A really good example of using Cursor and Copilot is when, as a developer, you have to debug code or write tests, because oftentimes it requires writing print statements or writing debugging breakpoints, and then with tests, you have to create a bunch of test functions that oftentimes is very monotonous. And Cursor and Copilot are able to do this automatically for you. And then whenever Cursor and Copilot make changes, you can see the before and after difference in your code. So that way you don't have to accept an immediate change. You can actually just quickly rerun the file and see if it works and then accept or reject. That way you're not moving your mouse at nearly as much and then you're not also manually adding in and then removing these break statements and print statements, which in a very large code base can get very monotonous and time consuming and ultimately save you a lot of time in the long run. Cursor and Copilot with their new agent modes now have the ability to generate entire apps from scratch and apps that use multiple files and multiple directories for you in seconds. And while I do think 25% of Google's code can be AI generated, that's often boilerplate code, a lot of the best apps out there are often created with handmade code, especially around the most important parts that involve 
the most business logic. And that's why you can't vibe code Instagram or at least the entirety of it. And that's why Meta hires over 40,000 different software engineers to not only build, but also maintain Meta, Facebook, and all its products. The people who benefit from using Cursor and Copilot the most are engineers who already knew software engineering before these AI tools came out because they know how to prompt Cursor and Copilot the right way and get the best uses out of them and get the best responses. Otherwise, you're gonna end up like this guy on Reddit who lost four months worth of work because he didn't know what version control, debugging, or software design was. As you can tell by this channel, I make YouTube videos, and recently I've been using Google's Gemini model for image and audio generation, and recently have been playing around a lot with Google's Flow Studio, which allows me to create AI-generated videos. And I'll let Bigfoot explain how it all works. Thanks, Alex. What's up, guys? I'm excited to show you all how Google Flow works, as the videos it generates are absolutely bananas. I really like how easy it is to use Google Flow to generate Hollywood-level movies in seconds. I first like to give Gemini a description of an eight-second video and tell it to give me a much longer prompt with more details as helps me get the precise results I want. Then, I paste the prompt into Flow, and after just a couple minutes, it generates me realistic-looking videos. This voice you're hearing is also generated from the native speech generation tool in Google's AI Studio. It's it's where you can also try the nano banana AI that everyone's using to fake pictures with celebrities. Here's me helping out Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey's engagement, which I made using nano banana powered by Google Gemini. Google Flow is great at helping me make viral content for promoting my business. Now back to Alex while I go scare some hikers. In addition to Google's AI products for content creation, my ChatGPT subscription and Adobe subscriptions also come with a lot of useful AI tools that I use for creating really nice images and graphics, as well as videos. I think the number one AI tool I use for images is the background remover in Photoshop that just allows you to click and select the subject and does so in seconds. This saves me so much time because five, ten years ago, I had to like literally click and drag my mouse around the edge of my face and then the background remover wouldn't actually completely work whenever I would do it. So I'd have to change the hardness of the brush. And it took me maybe like 15 or 20 minutes to carve out a background, whereas AI just does it instantly. And when I'm editing videos in Premiere, I can just have it auto caption my entire video so that I can make it look like a Mr. Beast video without me before manually having to time the clips and add the text. And it was just so manual and so bad before but now it's automatic and saves me so much time. And the third AI tool that I really like for video production that comes with ChatGPT is Sora. And even today, Sora is very good at generating B-roll footage that I use to make my videos sound smarter, like they're a documentary from BBC. This app helps me stay productive by helping me get through mental blocks, especially when I'm facing a stressful task or feeling like procrastinating. Having used it for eight months, it's become a healthy outlet for me to deal with negative emotions and thoughts. Whereas before I used ChatGPT for this kind of stuff, but it felt very robotic. Whereas this app is a lot more approachable and simple to use. This is Flourish, and I'm happy to say they're the sponsor of today's video. Made by PhDs from Stanford and Brown, Flourish is the only AI mental health app I've seen backed by scientific research. Yes, science! Through conducting their own studies with university students, Flourish found significant improvements in mental health as well as a statistically significant preference for Flourish over other apps. Sunny is Flourish's AI agent that helps me reflect on how I'm doing every day, as well as allow me to journal if I'm feeling bad or meditate on my commute to work. And from practicing this for eight months using the app, I've found that my own Flourish happiness score has increased from 6.3 to a 7.9. And best of all, Flourish is completely free to download. So go give it a try and let me know what you think. Ever since we were cavemen, we've used tools as leverage to make us more effective at what we're doing. Nowadays, instead of using bows and arrows to hunt, we're using ChatGPT and Cursor to build next generation software. And instead of watching the future unfold from the sidelines, you should be actually using these AI tools and seeing how they can make you be more productive so that you can essentially join the future and be a lot more productive and have a lot more leverage with your work. And if you want to learn and see examples of how to actually do it and how to understand all this AI stuff and all these buzzwords that are coming out, I think you should watch the rest of my channel. I have a lot of pretty good videos on using AI for different apps, as well as tutorials on how to use different AI tools. 
Thank you for watching this video. Hope you found it helpful. And comment below whether you've tried these five AI apps out there. I know you've definitely tried ChatGPT, but I'm curious, the other four, have you tried them? Well, let me know how they go.